dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye. Listen. When you see that we keep singing like this, it's because the Holy Spirit is doing something. Whenever he stands, you, you hook on to what he's doing and you don't rest. Please help me sound. Yeah. Just a song that I heard in my spirit now. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Just a homing. It's to you, our maker.
Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, My glory will I share with no man. I share my glory with no man. This honor no man takes to himself. I will do a walk in your midst, said the Spirit of the Lord. And it will be swift. It will be swift. I will do a walk in you. And it will be swift. I will make you the tabernacle of my glory, said the Spirit of the Lord. I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you, said the Spirit of the Lord. Through the ashes and through the pain, I burn my glory in you. Through the ashes and through the pain, I bring upon you new mantles. I bring upon you new graces. prophecy is falling on people right now right now right now I see it like like a cloth like a garment is a spiritual garment is falling on people right now the spirit of prophecy yeah. 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 even outside I see it like a garment falling on people yeah. of prophecy is like a garment men and women are wearing that garment right now prophetic word to the worship team new songs from heaven said the spirit of God new songs upon our worship team new songs upon our worship team is coming like mantles upon your spirit it's like radio waves into your spirit man worship team radio waves you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit. Songs in the spirit. You will hear them in the night time as you sleep. You will hear them in the morning. You will hear the voice of angels. They will sing those songs. And you will pick those signals. They are songs of new seasons. 
they are melodies of victory they are songs of triumph they are songs that speak the language of victory they are songs that empower the saints they open them to new dimensions in the spirit they are songs of the lamb they are songs of the lion they are songs from heaven they are sounds of the spirit yeah. I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead. The Lord says, I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead. Beyond the shadows are new realms of victory. Beyond the pain are new dimensions of triumph. Beyond the shadows are new levels of grace. For you will sing this song in the days to come, say the Spirit of the Lord. They are sounds of victory. Only the victorious can sing this song. They are melodies of triumph. They are melodies of victory. Say in the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. 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 says remember not the former things nor consider the things of old weep not for I bring you new joy say the spirit of the Lord I bring to an end your season of weeping I bring to an end your season of weeping you may not know how it will happen but I will move by my wisdom say the spirit of the Lord you do not need to know how it will happen for it will be swift and it will be strange say the spirit of the Lord you may not know how it will happen but it will be a move of the spirit and like the twinkling of an eye i will put a melody upon your lips a song of victory a song of victory a song of victory yeah. say unto you remember not the former things nor consider the things of old forget about the pain of the past for the glory that is before you is greater than the pain of the past it has been a season of birthing say the spirit of the lord have i not said as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son you have been in a season of birthing the pains are for a reason the pains are building strength in you to contend with the seasons of glory that are ahead weep not my child say the spirit of the lord weep not for the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more in your destiny for the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more yeah. 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 Rejoice for your salvation, draw it now. Say the Spirit of the Lord. Rejoice for your salvation, draw it now. Rejoice for your salvation, draw it now. I say again, it will be swift. It will be swift. 
like the twinkling of an eye it will be swift yeah. rise from your spirit. Go ahead. Make those melodies to him in the spirit. Let the melodies rise. It's an incense of worship. It's an incense of worship. Hallelujah. I see the angels of the Lord chariots fighting battles this is what i see in the realm of the spirit i see battles contentions i see a mighty warfare going on in the realm of the spirit a warfare for the new levels i see the arsenals of hell being torn down and i hear the saints with tears in their eyes shouting the song of the lamb and the song of victory. Just keep soaking in the glory. There is warfare going in the realm of the spirit. Don't think you are wasting your time. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so.
creation will worship creation will worship his majesty sing it the nations will worship It's unto you, O God. It's unto you. Let this rise as an incense of worship. mighty presence of God in this place there is a strong manifestation of the spirit of prophecy many of you will begin to prophesy 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 it's a strong unction of the spirit it's not the programming of the flesh it's by the strength of the spirit yourself that all you get in God's presence is just the word worship teaching then you share the grace you must always come into God's presence expecting him to move in any way and to do anything believe me you may not know the kinds of activations that are happening to people right now in this place see church is not designed just to be a place where you come and sit down and watch people and laugh there are times that all you need is to come and press into an encounter that you step out of that meeting and all of a sudden your sensitivity something has happened 
all of a sudden you find out that the burdens are lifted all of a sudden you find out that the chains are broken all of a sudden you find out that the power that comes from the throne does something to your life this is what his presence does see that all of a sudden in that atmosphere when the spirit of prophecy the bible says the testimony of jesus every time the true spirit of prophecy comes into a place all of a sudden the spirit of god meeting the needs of people touching people challenging people opening them up explaining to you your encounters of the secret place showing you why the things that happen happen giving meaning to your encounters this is the only way church will not be boring yeah, 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 Listen, all I'm seeing in the spirit is light, light falling on people. That's all I'm seeing. It's an illumination, strong impartation. Of light that's what is happening all over the building God is opening the eyes of men giving explanations for some of you the light that is coming is direction strange direction by the Spirit some of you this light that is coming is answered prayers that's the answer to prayers coming as that light from the throne Listen, let me tell you something. Many of us have robbed the Holy Spirit from finding expression. Some of these songs you see me coming, bringing from the Spirit. Many of us, God has been wanting to pass through you. But this rigidity we put, there is, there is a sense of religion. I am busy trying to make money, trying to read books, trying to be successful. We, our spirits are not malleable enough for the Holy Spirit to pass through us. The restraint is too much. That's why we don't get the sound. That's why our discernment is very low. Because we are busy. It takes, it takes staying in the present. Let me tell the truth. You will never touch certain frequencies in the spirit. When you are busy around trying to combine spirituality and many other things. The presence of God is a full time assignment. You must stay. Stay until the sound comes. Stay until the melodies come. Stay until the power comes. For when he comes, he comes with light. For when he comes, he comes with ease. For when he comes, he comes with illumination. Many of you have been praying, Oh Lord, take me to a new level. It's not just by prayer. Stay in the presence. Stay in the glory. That's the key. That's the secret. It's not just moving around. No, the glory doesn't just fall overnight. When you stay, your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit that's how it works it's not a hit and run thing you just rush and come out and then you want to hear with accuracy then you want his glory to flow it doesn't work like that there is a there is a staying there is a staying i tell you 
is a law you must stay the church has learned to hurry God and we are hurrying the glory of God out of our lives there are many of you here listen when you started out with God you had the time and the staying power but I don't know what it is that has happened God is challenging us that secret place is now a strange place for many of us we are busy doing ministry we are busy trying to make a living we are busy trying to move around the church has lost the art of the secret place the secret place is not a place it's a place where you stay like a waiter stay until his glory comes and then when his glory comes there is a signature upon your life undeniable the secret place is the place of power the secret place is the place where you have a message if God does not sit upon you with his glory you have no message you can talk it's not about Rema it's about the presence that follows it you can preach all you can but there is a glory this is a testament of his visitation upon your life that's what creates impact that's what breaks chains I like you to pray and say Lord show me your glory greater levels of your glory please pray expose me to that realm superior dimensions of your glory I have tasted of your glory I have seen what your grace can do but Lord there is a desperation within my spirit to taste of something tangible down if you can for those who can sit there will be many impartations the spirit of prophecy is strong in this place night Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you, you will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you're a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived different dimensions of the spirit that's why the place is called koinonia it's not a place of discussion it's an atmosphere of encounter Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't 
rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. Very long time. That press in the spirit to activate you. Listen, it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time. Something is wrong. And when you are rising, it's obvious. Everybody knows that there is a transition. Some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving God barely enough. See that? There are some of us, our dreams have ceased. Our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. Our passion for his glory has ceased. Listen, every time the experience you used to have with God ceases, something stopped it. It never stops by default. Are we together now? There are many of us, you used to see things before they happen. Right now, it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband. Hallelujah. Dry up. There's nothing there again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around within church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. There is the spirit, not the gift of prophecy. There is the very spirit of it. The very operation of the prophetic realm. Where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message. The spirit of prophecy. Men live with encounters they cannot explain. No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this atmosphere, something must surrender. That's what happens when his presence comes. You cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions. No. It doesn't work that way. The presence. That's what brings transformation. The presence. That's what brings change. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's only a price that very few desire to pay. Because we like things cheap. We like things easy. Anything that commits us, we do not want. We want results, but we hate process. Or we want to be mightily used. You want to stand and see the glory of God move around. Brother, there is a price. It's not a gift, it's a reward. It's a reward for diligence. It's a reward for surrender. It's a reward for total yieldedness. I used to hear Benny Hinn say it. Total yieldedness. That's the price for the anointing. Total yieldedness. Not half-hearted yieldedness. How many musicians are here? You have not brought one song from the spirit. It's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call. It's an indictment of, on your gift. There are melodies in the spirit like waves. But there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to. And then you will capture these things. The, the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture. Many of us, our prayer lives have died, gone cold, gone cold, gone cold. You only pray until you feel tired. See, let me tell you why many of us, our prayer lives are not effective. We are only praying to justify prayer. You don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit. You see that? Yes. You're at, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours, you can say, I have tried. That's a different, you are only praying to be better than somebody else. But there is a way you come with a desperation. And you pray that your spirit will make contact. If that contact happens in 10 minutes, you end. 
if that contact happens in five hours, you continue. See, it's not about religion. But it starts with a desperation. A desperation. A desire. The first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit, man. Get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them. Let those dreams come alive again. Because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny. A little here, a little there. Before the year runs out, we're going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels. You see, many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality. It's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually. That the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm. You will be a victim of too many things. You've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm to supply you the strength and the illumination. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here. There is more that God can do with your life if you will give him space. God is not a boyfriend. He's not a girlfriend. He's not looking for an affair. He wants a relationship. A very serious one. You give God an affair, you will get nothing out of it. If God is one of the many important things in your life, believe me, you will never find him. Believe me, you will never find him. Listen, listen. This desire is not for men of God. This desire is for everyone who wants God. Don't you think that this bias is for pastors? No, no. The spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that pulls you on dry. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't dry. Your presence is there. Just one more time. Your presence, Your presence is heaven. Is This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different. We are going to take, I'll respond to a few questions and answers. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. There are so many of us that have questions about the Holy Spirit, about encounters, spiritual growth. Will give us an opportunity, maybe 30 minutes and then I'll just minister to people. There are people who need to be ministered to. And so that's what we're going to do. Help us with another mic, please. Um, now I know that, please listen, many of us have questions, especially as regards intimacy, encounters, our spiritual lives. I'm trusting that God will grant grace. We'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it and please i want you to feel free make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth not just something that is a bias for some of us is something regards prayer your prayer life 
um, your word life. If there's no mic, you can, I can take one and then you can use this. Hallelujah. And so, um, because it's not only important to teach. There are some of us who have encountered certain challenges, maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the Spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the Holy Spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth. And I'm trusting that God will grant us um, a few minutes. That's deliverance happening to her. Something is leaving her. That devil of darkness. Leave her right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's one other lady with this same situation. Right now in this place. The power of God is coming upon her. This is a spirit that has been tormenting her. Lord, wherever that lady is right now, I declare deliverance. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That lady is in the congregation here. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's like fire that will come upon you. I judge that spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, I decree judgment. I pass a note of judgment to that wicked spirit. That is bringing oppression. Praise the Lord. So, we are going to have a little Q&A. And I will respond. And maybe uh, on one or two occasions, we can allow one or two people to respond. The questions will bless many of us because it will answer, it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives. I don't want our spiritual lives to be um, without accuracy. Some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time. That's why we are not getting certain results spiritually. Hallelujah. Some of us may be pressing into God for instance. There are people who press into God, but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding. Not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral, but that staying power is like there is a spiritual meter. Every time you get to a dimension, it pulls you back. You are making progress, but the graph is not straight. It's like it goes up, forces you down. Then you have to pray and fast your way. There are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit. Like a gentleman who, uh, I think someone sent me a text. I don't know if he's here. He sent me a text in the afternoon. Um, and he said every time he's in the presence of God or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of God, he starts yawning mysteriously, like yawning. And um, some of you are already nodding in agreement. It's happening to me too. What is the meaning of that? <laughs> are you yawning out demons? Are you absorbing the glory? What exactly is happening? So, um, Please be smart. Don't be rude to the protocol people. Just walk as they direct you. We're going to have a few questions. Um, I will use the questions. Some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings. And I'll use the opportunity and just address things. Don't be biased. Make sure that you ask things that are relevant. If your question is not relevant to our meeting, we'll ignore it. Is that all right? Let's pray in one minute and say, Father, speak to me. Go ahead and pray. hallelujah praise the lord okay so um we'll come in threes we'll just have the first three they will stand and then if there's any need so let me see by wave of hands i'll point people out okay number one you can stand up come second number two and then um let's have a lady figure all right that lady waving her hands in blue come quickly appreciate them as they come be smart tell us your name straight to the point if you're wasting our time, please, we'll, we'll send you to your seats. Let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed. Go ahead. Turn to the congregation. God bless you. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening, sir. Is it working? Yes, sir. Um, good evening, sir. Thank you. Yes, bless sir. you. Yes, sir. My question is um, about visions. Visions? Yes, sir. What, what are they? Visions. Okay. Yes, sir. What are they? And are visions a sign of spiritual growth? That's um, like spiritual visions. Are they limited to a particular set of people? People who do not have them as frequently 
As, are they growing? Yes. Are they, is it a sign that they are growing? Okay. I, I want to. Visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters, right? Um, there are many levels, dimensions, and types of supernatural encounters. Visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit. It could be realities that reveal the past, the present, or the future. You understand? It could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings. Now, the whole goal of visions, and, and I want us to pay attention, the whole goal of visions and encounters, any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension. Are we together now? So every time we talk of prophecy, it's not just speaking. Any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension. So in every man, there is a prophetic dimension. Let me call it a latent prophetic dimension. Now, those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office, the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office, you can walk, you should walk in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office. It heads and coordinates the spiritual activities. Are we together now? But in a typical prophetic office, by default, the moment you there is an election of grace upon you, inclined towards that prophetic office, there are it's like spiritual configurations by default. Are we together now? Now, your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it, but anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations by default can be open to the realm of the spirit that's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again are we together now remember he told jeremiah the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet are, are we clear now so visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic and the goal of visions dreams is illumination and direction sometimes also impartation it gives you illumination access to light and information right sometimes it gives you direction but in many cases it also comes with impartation that's why some of us can have dreams have visions encounters we don't exactly know why they came but they leave residues of impartations as we get up and begin our normal life we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated and we may not know at what point it was activated like wisdom like certain virtues do you understand so now but that does not mean listen if you are truly growing spiritually right even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension or prophetic realm if you are growing spiritually the the presence of god has a prophetic effect on everyone whether you're a prophet or not this is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the holy spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet but in reality he's not a prophet he's just one who has pressed into god to an appreciable dimension it's like an aura of god's presence now the bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually you will begin to um, get impulses it's called spiritual perception in fact i preached a message on that you can get it with the media after the service. Are we, are we understanding now? Because there are some of us here who are praying, we love God, but aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition, what people like Kenneth Hagin will call the knowing of the spirit, we've not had any supernatural encounter as it were. And sometimes we get intimidated. And I think I must correct that. Because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying, um, um, Ogashewu saw something and he's prophesying. And he's saying, oh, I saw something. And you, you are standing frustrated. That you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um, encounters. You are awake, you are alive, and you are caught up. Or a picture comes before you. Or the audible voice of God. Or some kind of supernatural encounters. It does not mean you are not growing spiritually. Are we together now? 
there are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the christ that's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth so if you are born again and there is no transformation in you you are not conforming to the image of christ believe me your salvation is questionable in fact let me let me press on this before we continue there are many people who think they are born again and and please i don't want you to doubt your salvation but i must be sincere with you there are many people who think they are born again and i tell you the truth by the lord they are not they are not saved the meaning of that is if they die today they are going to hell are we together now please don't don't trivialize salvation salvation is the is the supplanting of the very life of god in a mortal man are we together the bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed remember of the word of god so there is a seed the same way a man plants a seed in his wife what do you expect that seed to do there should be fertilization is that true and eventually as time progresses that seed right begins to produce so you cannot tell me you are born again listen that you are born again the life of christ is in you and you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit and progressively we do not see after a prolonged period of time evidences of conformity to the image of christ something is wrong with that salvation are we together now so it's very very important so that's one index the second index is your degree of comprehension the degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom so that your degree of conformity to what degree do i see christ in you in fact paul puts it this way he said my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was talking to people who were already saved so conformity to the image of christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom these two will naturally produce empowerment impartation access to the anointing are we together now so that's it about vision god bless you yes sir i appreciate you sir sir i want to know well, what's your name my name is oko sampoten okay yes when um you there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that pray, prayer life, life for instance is your going down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens although you prayed against it and it, it happens to um you you feel that okay you failed and then the spirit comes to um encourage you that as if it's it, it is it was proposed by god okay so what is the question so now? my question now is uh, when are, are those attacks actually and after the attack you grow higher are those attacks actually um ingredients to for you to grow spiritually to live you the level a, you are you mean a demonic attack uh, on your spiritual life for instance okay um his, his question has many sides to it i'm not getting exactly what he's asking but if i understand you well you mean your prayer life is going down yes are we together yes and then what happens there is a there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack yes a demonic attack on yes, your life yes okay and then for instance there is maybe a habit god has delivered you from and then there is a knowing that um it's coming back or something the devil wants to bring and it you back. pray yeah. and you pray against it let it not be let it not be and lord then it still and then it happens okay. then you feel like it's man it's gone then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed and then after that you feel a lifting higher okay i think i get what you're saying no 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 it's not a habit is not proposed to lift you up spiritually what you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of god and the grace of god there are many things interwoven so you don't justify that because you grew from it it meant god brought it now we must understand that there are different attributes of god that um it is part of the love of god now love in the spirit is not affection 
love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions there is a dimension of love called discipline there is a dimension of love called judgment there is a dimension of love called mercy there is a dimension of love called justice are we together that's why paul says to know the length the breadth and he he gives love a dimension so when we say the love of god comes to you it can come as his goodness it can, can come as his chastisement are we together it can come as his mercy now you are a believer number one we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down right there are two reasons why your prayer life can go down number one it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together according to galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says this i say then walk ye in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh right so it says the flesh lusted after the spirit the spirit after the flesh and there is a contention you get up in the morning i mean there are ladies to resist there is beer to cast away there, there are all kinds of things to happen there is bribery and corruption to run away from at the end of it after a while it's like it's like wear and tear your spirit can be fatigued that's not backsliding that's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit at that point the solution is a retreat isaiah 40 verse 31 even the young men can be weary they can faint all right then but they that wait upon the lord but in a situation where it is an attack which often happens there are three seasons where satan attacks people number one at the birthing of something new the moment there is something new about to happen in your life part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life you read the bible and you find out it's not unusual right very very important there is always a strange attack revelations i saw a mystery a woman who was carrying a man child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat now satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds any kind of seed spiritual seed if he cannot stop it he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary are we together now and if you cannot stop it then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest these are the three seasons and stages of satan's attack so before you start ministry look at that he did it to moses stage one when moses was about to be birthed and conceived they wanted to kill all the people so to abort the destiny from day one now that it did not happen he wanted to implicate moses and he caused moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him the process and then eventually towards the end of his life he used anger and stopped him from entering so there are three stages of satan's attack are we together we see that even in the life of jesus jesus about to be born his star shines in the east wise men follow him herod wants to kill him are we together then later on again we see that through the process after his baptism satan comes to wait for him and then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him i'll give you the kingdom bow down and since he refused and then he tried and tried and tried all through the lifetime of jesus satan could not get him and then the last stage was in hell when jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow and then he rose up and you know that when jesus was about to resurrect what happened they paid some people to lie even when he resurrected he, they guarded the place and when he resurrected they paid some people they said go and lie that the disciples came and stole his body so we see that there are seasons you can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks except you do not have spiritual intelligence now satan i'm using this are, are we getting blessed is god speaking to us satan is not omniscient there are three attributes that make god sovereign number one is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere satan is not everywhere job 1 verse 1 from whence comest thou later on you read from running to and fro god doesn't run to and fro his eyes can see everything the all-seeing eyes 
of God. Are we together now? Number two, his omniscience. His ability to know all things. Satan does not know all things. He works with informations. That's why he uses human agents to probe into people. That's why Satan pursued prophets. Because he wanted to hear what God was telling them. Are we together now? Very important. And then number three, his omnipotence. His ability to have all power. Once have I spoken, twice have we heard that all power belongs to the Lord. Now, Satan does not have these attributes. Are we together? So, Satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life. And that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities. Satan was once a cherub. And so, he understands. Remember when Jacob slept, right? When you read Genesis 28. When Jacob slept, he saw a ladder. There were unusual activities happening. Are we together now? The same thing Jesus told Nathaniel. In John chapter 1, he said, you will see many things. You see the heavens open and all of that. So what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what God is about to do. That's why when prophecy comes, that's not the time to cross your leg. Paul spoke to his son Timothy. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies. Because prophecy is an announcement. It's an unveiling. The moment the voice of God prophetically spoke, John said, behold the lamb. And a voice said, this is my beloved son. Satan started chasing him. Are we together now? So when there is an attack, it usually is that God is, is trying to do something in your life and Satan is trying to raise a counter-attack. At that point, if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace. Are you following me now? And that's the power of a retreat. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait. The moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life, and you will know it by the intuition of the spirit, some of you will see it in dreams. Some of you will have it in visions. Some of you prophecies will come to you. And many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy. Now, prophecy must not be exalted above the word of God. However, it's important to many times pay attention to it. Especially when it's coming from vessels that know God and are credible. It's important to pay attention. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. So, when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack... If it prevails over you, an attack is inevitable on the saints. And it's not a surprising thing. The surprise, however, is when Satan prevails. Are we together now? Because even in heaven, there was war. The Bible said there was war in heaven. That, that dragon, Lucifer, he rose. An archangel, Michael, also rose. But Satan prevailed not. There was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth. And there was a lamentation. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. You know, Satan, that old serpent, he has come with anger and great fury. Are we together now? So if there is an attack, an affliction, the secret is prayer. And it's in a secret place. So if your prayer life died, it's because you did not build momentum before that time. Are we together? That's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call, it's like a spiritual bank. It's like an energy bank. So your daily prayer, the Bible says redeeming the time. That's the mystery. There are two words that are used time in the Greek. There is chronos and there is kairos. Chronos is the passage of time. Kairos is an opportune time or a set time. The Bible uses these two words in the book of Psalms. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time, chronos, to favor her. Yea, the kairos. When you translate it to Hebrew, the set time. Are we together now? So, there is a set time, an opportune time, where major things happen between heaven. There is serious business between you and heaven. And at that time, the devil knows and he will launch attacks. So, what you do is you build a spiritual fortification. Both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer. So that at such time, it will sustain you. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, what was wrong? Your strength, your spiritual strength now is small. So if you fell in that attack, it's because your strength was small. Are we together? 
let's assume let's use something maybe pornography are we together now and it's something god had delivered you from and you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography are we together now and then you fell to it that falling is not a test that falling is not the furnace of affliction we are talking about that you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through but then in the midst of it the dimension of god's love called mercy comes in so don't confuse it that because you learn more from that situation it means it was god that orchestrated it god simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising you will now rise better stronger and more anointed this is what makes god love are you getting it now but that does not mean god intended for you to necessarily fall the falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man i don't know if you understand what i'm saying yes sorry uh, this is there are many people if yeah. you ask two two questions please if you come out after two questions you go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question are we together yeah um, this has been happening i will see some things i won't i will not know how to inquire for the meaning and when it happens later sometimes they are not good at times it posi it's positive you will what sorry see for instance so you will see things yeah, yeah, visions yes now. now like there was a time i saw myself traveling with a lady and when it came i didn't understand what it meant when it came to, traveling with a lady uh, to, a, a to, to a place yes when it to came where? to a place i didn't know we were going okay, to a place. okay no so location the, okay the reality was that the person was under attack and I was the one to lead her to the prayer place um, uh, in Niger State. And that, that oh, was you where, held her and you were taking her yeah, to a place. Okay. That's where she got her this thing. But I didn't understand the meaning then. Now, recently, I saw a, a lady, my cosmate, um, pick a bag and was traveling. I didn't know what it meant. The next day, uh, she actually told me she was, tra she was traveling to a place. I said, what for? I said, somebody just died there. Now, I understood that uh, maybe we were, if we had prayed, about the journey and all of that, if it was a bad one. So, how does one, my question is, how would one be, um, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers? Okay, God bless you. Now, there are two things here that I will attempt to respond to. I, I don't know if we understand his question, but um, after this, we'll take three people from outside before we continue. So, protocol help us. We'll get the three people from outside who have questions. Please, you see how time is going. If you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense, we have agreed as a congregation that we're sending you back. Please, we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time. Are we together? So please, before you come, make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself. Are we together? Ask questions. Seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough. Yes, yes, please. Please, so that you don't, you don't come out here and, and waste our time. But the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually, three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch? that I saw what if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty you can't just say I saw a chain it means I'm under attack I, I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God and when she got to that dimension she she a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked and came and met her and started lambasting her and say you are walking in immorality what kind of nonsense life is this you are giving us an impression like you are serious with god now your secret has been revealed and the lady was depressed and she came and met me that that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit but it was wrongly interpreted three of us can see a finger in the spirit for one, it means warning. Stop what you are doing. For another man, one, it means direction. Come up here. Are we together? For another, it means I am blessing the works of your hands. We all saw the same thing. So it is wrong. Remember in the interpretation of the dream of, of, of Joseph and the wine presser and baker, all of them saw three, three things. Three baskets, three this. 
he interpreted for the first one and he was happy then the other one said me too i have my own he said in three days they will hang you and this is established and they hung him after three days are we together so stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations you only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world. For instance, anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Anywhere. It's a spiritual symbol that the Spirit of God has associated himself with. Except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating, that's, a, that's deception, for instance. Because according to the scriptures, the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light. Are we together now? So, it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters. But not just that you see, you can see a woman in the spirit. You can see yourself moving with a woman. And you may think that God is punishing you from lo or lost. A woman in the spirit is a gate. That woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season. Are you seeing now? But because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence, you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come. And, and all of that. So I think um, for the gentleman, I think I've been able to help him. I, I hope that I got his question correctly. If I didn't, I'm, I'm so sorry. Praise God. Yes, my dear. Praise God. Permit me to say this that first. That is an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm very Thank happy you. I'm here tonight. You're My welcome. question is to Baroshi too. The first question is, what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual good? Today you are hope, tomorrow you are Spiritual you're growth. Uh, does but it mean that um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just two. the second question is you're talking about dream and vision in my lodge we had a case where someone said he had a dream blah 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 and it's really caused a big advoct in my lodge today. look at the congregation okay it's, it's really caused a big advoct in my lodge i'm asking the question that he had a dream about the lodge or something about the sister that the sister came to seduce him blah 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 and everybody was now calling the sister a witch that as does it mean that all dreams comes from god Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was, sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost, um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit, so my mind is hardly here. Um, her first question was what? <laughs> up, up and down. Okay. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, please. What does... The Bible say the path of the just is like a shining light that does what shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Now there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding. I think I've, I've cleared I've cleared that. All right, for as long as you are wearing this body, the limitations of carrying up mortality, right? The concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible. But immortality is not an impartation. Immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit. Because the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. Now, the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast. That's why we die. Are we together now? But it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension. Enoch did it. Elijah did it. So we know that it's possible to live bodily, although in a glorified form, out of this earth. Moses didn't do it um, and all of that. But at least we have two witnesses, two evidences in the Bible that they were able to access that. So when you find yourself, see, and, and this is, her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health. If you are sick and you don't know, how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick, they don't even know? To them, they are healthy. You just test them and say, Mr. Man, you have malaria plus plus. And yet, the person is playing football. You not, now tell the person, go to the hospital. That's how many people are spiritually. And for me, your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for God. There are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger. Number one, your prayer life. 
your when your prayer life is is nose diving don't ever pretend that is a dimension of growth you are backsliding immediately once your prayer life is going down don't let satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, god doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you your spiritual life number two your passion for the word number three your passion for the house of god number four i want to call it your your sense of morality is important if all of a sudden I sit down and I find out that I start lusting after you, call me apostle, call me whatever, I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you, Abel is preaching, Cain is there disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I will use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The moment, see, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. You feel all right. Very, very all right. You carry your Bible and there is no zeal to read. Sometimes it could be in the presence of God, you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or... It is backsliding. Are we together? But ultimately, the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue, your passion is still there. It's just the zeal and the strength to press through that is not there. But under backsliding, your zeal and your passion dies. Are, are we together now? For the our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him, um, that's, that's wrong. You see, this, this is the problem we have when we live in christian communities because people wake up with all kinds of things i spoke to you about interpretation this brother may be a sincere person maybe he's here we are not creating fight are, you, are we together you don't know whether he followed you for koinonia you said he's in your lodge now the point is this it is wrong you see prophecy and in the realm of and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation are we together? I can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty. For him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say, is he the only person in the lodge? You'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something. So, um, it's, it's a wrong paradigm. Now, you point, do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shalhoma chasing me maybe with a stick in a dream are we together now and all of a sudden i wake up and i say i saw shahoma chasing me and his welfare that cooks for me i put two and two together and i say my life is under i'm in danger i mean and then i now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy apostle joshua selman some of you you have that paradigm now it can happen a possibility exists that such kinds of things happen i mean in the house of god there are all kinds of things but then i'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady if he does not understand seek counsel there are there are spiritual puzzles that we put together you must let scripture interpret your encounters are we together now i mean in the bible women seduce men what was the progression of the seduction samson was seduced are we together who again was seduced in the bible huh job was not seduced who? joseph was seduced you see some of you are saying job look at how your poor by please how about this is koinonia don't we are bible people how, job was never seduced the only woman with him was his wife please don't go and say that anywhere it's very bad are, are we together now my dear so that 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 teaching even if it was true this is what i would have done if i had a dream and you pursue me or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream right even if it was your face it's wrong to get up and call you a witch do you know because you don't know what spiritual challenges she's facing you now get up and you now call her a witch three situations would 
help to interpret that number one it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction it can be true are we together that you as a person you are not bad but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust or because of the background you are coming from and so it will happen in the similitude of your face disturbing that person are we together now and so you will feel bad number two it can be the spirit of confusion the devil masquerading to now cause confusion are we together so he will now use your face just like you saw your father quarreling you you saw your mother caught beating you you just got up and said your mother is a witch anybody whether my father my mother the, the woman is innocent you find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft however 80 percent of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of you see that so um whoever he called a witch i can guarantee you is not a witch Please, she left her father's house to also come and do NYSE. She's not a witch. She may not be spiritually strong and all of that, but she's not a witch. It may be wrong. So go and comfort her. The brother, what he saw, when you have encounters, you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them. But one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace. At that point, you know that whatever is the issue, whether calling it forth or driving it away, it has been settled. It is for that cause the Spirit of God makes intercession for us. I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for it. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, praying in the Spirit is the way forward. And you pray until there is that check in your spirit. That whatever it is, it's been settled. You understand? So that's what you should do. God bless you and increase you. Eh? Okay, yes, straight sir. to the point. Um, we have, okay. Let's have one or two more people. Two more people. Please, if you are sure your question is really going to bless us. We have a little time. And do, please, and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time. Are we together? The gentleman... Uh, if your questions will be fast, I can listen to it and combine it. That gentleman, there's a lady in the background. You, sister, the one waving your hands, come. Um, have we had anybody outside? Okay, there's one person outside. Okay, one usher, come. You're a worker, we love you, come. Okay, so quickly. Good evening, sir. It's so a process whereby... Don't look at me. As you're saying, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In the process whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Yes. Example. What is lust of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. And you are praying. Praying in tongues. Pray. You are in the process of prayers. And you are still having the feelings. In the process of praying, oh, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir. What do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or lust and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions, the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever we've seen these kinds of cases so um do you know what deliverance is deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation 
does not take away the covenant that is in a territory are we together now that is the reason why someone can be born again there are still corrupt people in nigeria but are you corrupt no are we together now nigeria is termed a corrupt nation yet there are righteous people who are true are we together now the earth is the lord yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people so there are covenants a covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings right that either opens up access for good or of evil covenants have consequences right they can they can they can transcend generations so this is very important that's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it the moment there is a covenant involved in any process there is a pattern if these three guys are brothers and you find out that michael is very rich kenny is very rich promise is very rich you see that pattern there is a covenant that grant that access promise very poor kenny very poor michael struggling there is also a pattern so patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant so you find out that a father is an armed robber when he stole his son did not know many years later the son will also come and steal have you seen people like that the same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves because the patterns are a spiritual formula there is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen i know a lady who who i i, I think um, um she got pregnant and the person who got her pregnant i think was a man of god same thing happened to her mother same thing happened to her grandmother one reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant many years later one one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant and then now one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. now that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young but then the truth remains that there is a pattern are, are we together are you getting it now and i know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist and we try to explain them away but the truth is is there it can be dealt with potentially the birth of jesus gives us access to victory in this thing but there is the experience of establishing that victory are we together number two is ignorance 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 grants access to demon spirits they manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations then number three is disobedience you know it but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there so these are the three access points so if you find out that you are praying praying and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement and it's repeating itself you need help that's the reason why god puts um gifts to the body to be able to help right remember our teaching for this course many are weak many are sick and many do sleep god has elected certain people in the body of christ and created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things that's why we organize miracle services that's why we organize um, um all kinds of meetings that's why when we come to god's presence like this we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of god can come and then address some of these things so for that brother you may need help seek help look for an anointed man of god not just a counselor somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you praise god praise the lord my name is luke my name is luke it's talking about the presence of god okay i heard of your message you preach about doers of the world okay and you mentioned i forgot the man name but you say pursue of the presence when we pursue how do one pursues the presence of god and how do we abide in that presence of God? Like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one, what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere you see i preached a message years ago called Lo the law of atmosphere everything thrives based on the atmosphere created 
the presence of God requires an atmosphere. The presence of God is invoked, just like you invoke spirits. There is an atmosphere that allows the presence of God to be made manifest. Are we together now? Worship is one key that opens up the presence of God. Your passion, your love towards God. In other words, you're prioritizing him. Making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands, John um, um, 16, 21, I think I'm right. Or 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to. And um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven? Yes, and there's no heaven. Uh, okay. So, now we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1. And after much argument, she was now asking me that. In Revelation 21, she said, and I saw a new heaven and coming new down ahead. And you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven? And the new earth. And I didn't know what to really tell. I just kept quiet. I was confused in that aspect. God bless you. Um, I don't know if it's the millennial reign of Christ or... I understand. I don't really... You see, we labor day and night uh, contributing our quota to help believers become matured. Are we together? You make people become matured by giving them understanding. Now, before I answer, I, I don't mean in any way, I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings, about heaven and all of that and um, i'm not giving you a denominational opinion are we together now there are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven are we together now very very important i, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments genesis 1 verse 1 the very first verse in the bible in the beginning god created what and the earth now i think that alone answers first verse first chapter in the whole bible in the beginning god created so don't say where is it created god created the heavens and notice he never said the heaven heavens different planes paul himself gave us an example he said he was caught up to the third heaven that means there are other dimensions the psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord so we know that there are different planes but there is heaven hallelujah are we together now the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above not just the sky are we together now acts chapter one when jesus was about to be taken when he lifted to heaven two angels appeared and told the people men and brethren why look ye you know this and that and that he said this same jesus is it not the Acts chapter 1? Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1 verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. Or the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse, verse 10. Verse 10. I know that when you read from verse 9. Let's start from verse 9. It gives us an impression like he just vanished. He did not just vanish. A cloud received him. A cloud received him. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, please, quickly. And while they looked steadfastly towards where? Heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse, verse 11. Which he also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, into where? Into where? So we know that heaven is the habitation. The heaven of heavens 
is where Jesus himself lives. There is a place, a spiritual location called heaven. It says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. Are we together? So that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances, Old and New Testament, that there is heaven. Jesus himself, I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said, our father who art where? He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven and, and um, there are people there right now. Are we together? And we hope that one day we'll join them. Now, what we need to explain is the fact that the Bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come. It is true that that very habitation of God will eventually be transported back to this realm. But it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions. So it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm. No. There will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space. This is the sovereignty of God. This is part of the mysteries of the kingdom. Where this whole heaven and all earth will be rolled away to, frankly speaking, we don't know. The Bible does not reveal that. Uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come are we together now that's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints so there is heaven my dear and every time you preach to people and they argue with you don't turn your evangelism into debate politely decline you may look foolish don't say no i can't let this go like this let it go like that so that god will be glorified yes my dear praise the lord my name is Christiana Kaduri. Thank you. My question is, sir, like somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a man of God, and you have been waiting. <laughs> okay. Many ladies are happy. Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody... And said you will marry a pastor, yes. and you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because... One miracle service, I saw you, sir, you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, <laughs> I'm asking that. So, when somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting. What okay. to do? That's a very good question, I think. We can use it. It's not just prophesying about marriage. It could be about anything. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I, I understand what she's saying. And she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people. Because over time, women of God have spoken to people. And there are times that for others, the prophecy have even come with precise detail. You are going to marry a man called uh, Ebenezer. He's in media department. The day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser, he's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for Koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. And your heart is beating. It's true. Ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else are we together now and now you are waiting and you are frustrated now there are three things here i want to explain i know we have all laughed but let's listen closely now the bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace are we together two of us can be prophets but the grace the access to authority and strength the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors one is just doing his housemanship another one is doing another one is a consultant 
They are all called doctors. But are they the same? They are not the same at all. Are we together now? This is how it is spiritually. So when, we, when there is the ministration of the word, notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people, I call people out by the spirit and I just keep quiet. Because of what the Lord is communicating to me, sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism. I'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh and to also make sure if God wants me to reveal it to them. Sometimes you see me and I talk to people. I take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may is something that can be embarrassing. Are we together now? But let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you this sincerely. One thing I know about marriage, and we have discussed that, make reference to my message, um, challenging discussions on late marriage. I think we touched that area where the issue of God said overrides the word of God. The Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 1, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son which he has appointed to be heir over all things and we know that that son is the living logos the word of god and so whether it is joshua selman i'm not telling you to doubt the word by the grace of god we press into the word of god to make sure that we bring accurate words and there is a track record you can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people some of them have come to pass. Some of them are already on the way. Praise the Lord. Now, um, no matter what it is, if a man of God gives you a prophetic word, and after a season, you do not, for instance, let's use marriage. I prophesy to this lady now, and I tell her, a pastor is coming. And Michael comes to her. And let's assume Michael is just a businessman. You know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away. And say, please, you are not a pastor. Um, he may be a pastor when he marries her. God didn't lie. Are we together? But sometimes, it can also be that there is need for a check. In fact, sincerely speaking, let me tell you, it is very, it is very praiseworthy to go back to God again. We have seen instances in the Bible where God spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again. Are we together? An example is Isaiah 38 when he spoke to Isaiah to speak to Hezekiah. Remember that scripture? He came and told him, Hezekiah, put your house in order. You will not recover from this sickness. You are going to die. Are we Bible students? So when I, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of God, God sent Isaiah again. Are we together? To go back. So there is a possibility. It's not a doctrine. But through scripture we see that there is a possibility. Um, the alignment of man can make God say new things. I'll give you an instance. If this lady is your wife. Are we to, um, example, example. If this lady is your wife. I'm not showing you your wife. If this lady is your wife. Of, of course. Let me just put a, a little word of blessing. We are proud of our ladies. And if I say it and God is, 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 is directing you there, there's nothing wrong. Ladies, you should give me a happy meal tomorrow. Are we together? But now this is the example. If this is your wife, truly, truly, and she says, I'm not doing, do you think God is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any, anybody again? Because of her carelessness and disobedience. Are we together now? God will not put you to ransom. The same way if God calls you into ministry and you say no. Will he force you? Will he kill you? The same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him. When you refuse, he will not force you. There's hellfire already to settle that issue. So he will not force you. Please, I want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that would deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Ari or it must be flight... 
Are we together now? In scripture, again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them? When you read in the Bible, it was his desire that he remains their king. But the people out of anger and rebellion, they say, give us a king. And God had to make prophet Samuel to go and anoint Saul, the son of Kish, to become a king. Are we together now? Yes. It was never even God's desire. Listen. It was never God's desire for David, for the tribe of David, to be the lineage with which Jesus will come. It was supposed to be Saul. Are we together? But Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off, um, giving the offering by himself. They asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet. But he could not wait because the people were murmuring. And being a king, he was not a priest. Are we together? Because in ancient times, there were kings, priests, and prophets. They operated in different dimensions. Occasionally, the priests were also the prophets, like we have in the case of Samuel. He was both a priest and a prophet. Are we together now? And so in that incidence, um, Saul now start, he made sacrifices. And while he finished, Samuel just came. And Samuel told him, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice, God would have established your throne forever. So it would not be the lion of the tribe of, or, or the, the root of David. It would now be the root of Saul. Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling and say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry and is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly-dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted reveal three things. Number one, it is costly to be ignorant over spiritual things. Are we together? It is costly. Just a little question and answer session, but it has exposed us to a lot of things. It is costly. I trust that with this little question and answer session, it has activated our appetite for more of God. You see, if you do not understand scripture, you will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer, I show you a scripture to support it because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions and you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Praise the Lord. Psalms 82 from verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. He said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. So it is important for us to be good students of the word. Not religiously studying it, but studying it with everything that we have. Hallelujah. Number two, corporate fellowship is very important. It's part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth. You can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. 
it is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron right down to his bird and to his cat and all of that is yet dear God had commanded the blessing so it's very important corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening hallelujah and then number three ultimately it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the Holy Spirit worship team sang the song beautifully we're going to sing that song again and and then we'll sing that song that came I can't even remember what we sang but try to remember it worship team we'll sing those two songs again very beautifully the Holy Spirit this place is called koinonia is our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom the Bible says ride prosperously because of truth right you will only prevail by the truth you know not the truth that is available the truth you know it can be available but if you do not know it you will still die there are still people going to hell whereas the price for our sin has been paid for hallelujah we are going to pray um, just a few minutes and we'll be done we are going to pray and ask the Lord very passionately very passionately to open up our spirits to open up our spirits very very important while seated just pray we're going to stand up but then I want us to pray while seated and talk to the Lord some of us have seen this situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things if you were to be asked some of these questions many of us see that this is like a, a test those outside make sure you are praying at the back there outside at the window make sure you are participating in the prayer the Lord is with you right where you are make sure you are praying and say Lord please deliver me from spiritual ignorance deliver me from ignorance grant me access to the word grant me access to the word deliver me from spiritual ignorance Lord I want to be furnished grounded in the truth the Bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He says for the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints. That they the saints now equipped will do the work of the ministry. To the end that we all will come into the fullness of the, the, the measure of the stature of Christ not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine lift your voice and pray and say lord in this time and age in these end times where there is a lot of error there is a lot of confusion i pray that i be delivered from spiritual ignorance lift your voice and pray deliver me oh god from ignorance open my eyes to access light in the spirit Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. 
Hallelujah. Number two, Lord, align my spirit in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way. please rise as we pray this very prayer point is important oh god if ever you need a vessel find one in me lift your voice and pray use me oh god many of us have stopped praying that prayer use me for your glory lift your voice and pray lord use me use me use me i may not be a man of god but make me a mighty vessel in your hand Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. As an agent of deliverance. As an agent of transformation. As an agent of healings. Miracles, signs, wonders. Use me in the prophetic, oh God. Use me in the apostolic, oh God. Use me in the healing ministry. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hey. Holy God, take your place, take your place, take your place. Holy God. For your glory use me for your glory use me for your glory have your way have your way hallelujah hallelujah i like us to pray any gift of the spirit any dimension that once walked in you but for some reason has stopped working. I like you to pray and say, Lord, revive her. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. I used to have dreams, but the dreams have disappeared. Lord, let it come back. I used to have encounters. I used to have ministration of angels. Oh God, my prophetic dimension was sharper than this something has happened lift your voice and pray restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration oh god restoration of the gifts of the spirit restoration of the wisdom of the spirit restoration of passion passion for god restoration of passion restoration of hunger spiritual seriousness hunger for bible studies hunger for prayer hunger for fasting hunger for the house of god hunger to see his kingdom come 
Take your place. Take your place. Pray it from your heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Hallelujah. Listen. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Don't allow the things of the flesh pollute your spiritual atmosphere. It will destroy you, I tell you. Some of us is friends. I'm not teaching you to hate people. The character of the Christ is love. But you cannot give everybody access to pollute your environment with everything. No. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, please don't say it does not matter. The true spirit of holiness, let me tell you the truth. The true spirit of holiness is the atmosphere that brings the presence of God. The true spirit of holiness don't trivialize it. The true spirit of holiness is what creates the atmosphere of the spirit. Because he's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There is a beauty that holiness brings. It's called the beauty of holiness. Culture your atmosphere. Take God seriously. No one leg in, one leg out and you are just playing around. Don't be careless with your life. Hallelujah. I just sense a need that we should make this prayer again a final point. Because like Samson, there are people who have lost touch with certain virtues. You receive certain things, maybe in a meeting or in koinonia or somewhere or an impartation. A man of God laid hands on you and activated spiritual possibilities. But some of us, you did not know how to fan it to flame. There are some of us here. The level of the prophetic you should be walking in now. If you were consistent with God, you would have been walking in notable levels. But you are still at that level. There are some of us, the level of the teaching grace. If you were only serious with the word, you read your Bible once in a month. But look what you are doing. Imagine if you read it every day. Hallelujah. He said, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your spirit from me. We need that restoration. And we're going to pray. Make this prayer personal. Listen. You know where you are slacking in the spirit. Don't feel condemned. But you must sustain grace to catch up. Some of us is our prayer life. There's really nothing left there. Some of us is our word life. You are a prayer machine. But your word content is low. So there is wrong interpretation to your spiritual things. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, a restoration. Mention the area you want him to restore you. Lord, I need a restoration of your presence. I used to carry heavy weights of your presence. Everyone who came around me felt that presence. But for some reason, oh God, I've lost it. Pray. Restoration.
Hallelujah. Lift your hands as I pray for you. Fire is going to come on a lot of people. Just in one minute, there will be activations and impartations. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. There are a number of people in this place that the fire must be restored. Through apostolic fire, through prophetic fire, at the count of three, listen, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. As you shout that name, for many of you from tonight, you will go back and the dreams will be restored. For many of you, right away, the healing anointing comes. Lift your voice. Father, I pray that in the next one minute, let there be a mighty restoration and an impartation. As your people shout that name, I pray that your glory will fall on them. Right now, one, two, three. Receive it right now. Right now, right now, right now. Receive it. My goodness, help them. That impartation. That impartation. Receive it right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it. Dreams, dreams, dreams. The Lord is activating dreams. Prophetic dreams. Symbolic dreams. Restoration of healing power. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. Hallelujah. The healing anointing is falling. I don't know why God is talking to me about healing. The healing anointing, receive it right now. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Take it. Take it now. 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 The healing virtue. I release it from the spirit. Power to heal. Power to heal. Power to heal. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Power to heal. Power to heal. In the name of Jesus. Power to heal. In the name of Jesus. I hear my spirit. The gift of utterance. Utterance. Lord, where are those people? Like fire will come upon you. Some of you on your mouth, literally. Utterance. Utterance. I impart it right now. Right now. Right now. Utterance. Inside and outside. Fire is falling. Mantles of utterance. Yeah. of God. Hallelujah. Just one last one. And then we take the altar call. Discernment. This one will come on us. Many of you don't know what discernment is. The ability to sustain capacity in the spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by this apostolic anointing. Activate discernment in your people right now. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it everywhere, inside and outside. The ability to sense the impulses of the spirit realm. The impulses of the spirit realm. The ability to understand the language of God. 
the language of God the language of God of one year and darkness of two days and darkness of five years and darkness of 20 years they are all solved by the same instance light you would think that the longevity of the darkness would threaten the strength of the light when you switch on the light you will not know which of the room was dark first all of them come under the influence of that light So don't you tell me I've been in this condition for 30 years. Don't tell me I have been in this situation my entire family. Don't even say it just started last week. In light of the power of light, it doesn't really matter. If it is light indeed. Hmm. You are here working miracles. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, we call you way maker, miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Listen, by the privilege of God's grace, and I do not mean to sound arrogant, but by the privilege of the election of grace, I have spent my life literally watching the manifest power of God over lives, over territories. I know miracles are real i know that god can move and shift systems within a moment now please hear me as mighty as god is he will always use men to achieve his purposes you have to understand this the bible says and by a prophet the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. He was the one who brought them. But the agency, the vehicle, was a prophet. He says, and by a prophet was he preserved. We have come tonight to give God an opportunity to give us visitations. Visitations over our lives. Now listen, in as much as we do not serve God because of miracles, because of signs and wonders, we love Him more than that. But can I tell you, He's loving enough to be attentive to our needs. When they camped with Him three days, He kept teaching, 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 and the disciples said, These people are hungry, let them go. He said, No, this is not consistent with my character. I must take responsibility for their commitment. Feed them. How do we feed these people? You cannot tabernacle here. Leaving all the things that you have to do. Some of you have closed businesses, some of you have made all kinds of sacrifices. The God that we serve is a loving God. The God that we serve is a powerful God. And tonight he has chosen by his wisdom to reveal himself as that all-powerful God. Listen, listen to me. I, I wish I had time. I would have shared with you a few encounters, especially from scripture and then in my own life. I have seen the miracle power of God. I have been in situations in my life where I needed the manifestation of God's power. And I have seen him come through. This God you see is dependable. This God you see is reliable. Look up. Can I tell you something? Because of our human nature, 
there is a way you can be so overwhelmed by the reality of your frustration, your financial situation, whatever it is, that you may not believe. You may say amen, but somewhere in your heart you say, look, I, I've, been, I've, I've been here in such, I've been here long enough. In fact, I did not even write my condition in the prayer request because I'm not sure if God can attend to me. Brothers and sisters, if you be been evil, the Bible says, that means as evil as men are, even terrorists take care of their families while they kill others. That means he's saying that as evil and wicked as people are, there is still a, a part of them that can communicate compassion. He said, how much more? Your heavenly father. So the proof of his fatherhood is his ease to release blessings to you. Please, I want you to believe this because we are going to get into a very serious session right now. I want you to be dissatisfied. Everything that does not name the name of Christ in your life, be ready to wave it goodbye. Be ready to wave it goodbye. And insist that it waves you back. Are we together? There are many of us here under the sound of my voice. What will take one month to do will now take you ten years to do. There is a spirit behind that kind of thing. Just help those under the anointing. My spirit is fired up. I have seen people, let me tell you this, you know that delays at work in your life when the only thing growing in your life is your age. Some of us are connected to men and women who can be used by God to lift us. They will watch you like this and promise you heaven and hell. And go around and bless others and you stand there as though you are not covered by favor. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Why do we need results in our lives? Don't you dare look down on the need for results. If your life does not produce results, your Christian experience will be frustrated. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Here's what it says. Herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaching what we call the Beatitudes. When you read from verse 15 and 16, he says, let your light so shine before men. Not in heaven, not before angels, before men, that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. John chapter 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed and this is what he said. Father, the hour has come. He says, glorify thy Son, that thy Son may glorify you. If the sons in light are not glorified, God cannot be glorified. Let me tell you honestly, God is not glorified when believers are poor, broke, limited, frustrated, oppressed. Those things do not spell a good image of this God that the Bible talks about. And so when he comes to you, he comes to lift. He comes to tear down everything that mocks his integrity over your life. Are you blessed tonight? What should we expect tonight? Expect to be healed. What should we expect tonight? Expect to be delivered. All kinds of yokes and, and devilish things that have tied destinies down. I have been oppressed. I know what it means to be oppressed. Hmm. Did he not say the spirit of the Lord is upon me? For he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open up prison doors. Have you seen any physical prison with a man inside? There are human beings moving physically, but they are in prison. Open up those closed doors. Most of you have become an object of shame and mockery to yourself and all who know you. 
They call you by all kinds of names and say you are there serving God, praying, fasting, rolling on the ground. There is nothing in your life that shows like God is alive. And can I tell you, that mockery has reached the heavens. God is now saying, I'm a warrior. Clear the road for me. I want to have a holy convocation in the midst of my people. He says, the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. So I'm saying this because in the next two, three minutes, we are going to pray and shake off unbelief. Shake off unbelief and say, I believe, I know, I know that God can change my life. I know that while I'm seated here, God can begin to move over someone and that person will not have rest tonight until he calls me and says, where have you been? I have been looking for you. Then you know that this one is not the doing of man. Please believe what I'm telling you. I'm not, I'm not just, this is not some, I fear God, I will not come here and waste your time. You see, let me tell you this. It is seen to attempt to communicate a spiritual reality that is higher than the dimension of grace you have. The Bible says to minister according to the measure of grace. Difficult things that are supposed to be easy. But there are people who sit, you start a, a building project, for years you are still at it, years you are still at it, as if it's a cause. I hope you are not offended. I'm challenging you because God is determined to visit you this night. Now please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Can I be very honest with you under God? Primarily, over 80% of the challenges of men, listen carefully, 80% or more of the challenges of men, there are spirits and forces behind it. Find a way of believing that this is true. He says the enemy has done this. Jesus clearly told us that the enemy has done this. And so he has sent us and anointed us tonight. And granted us the privilege of grace. I thought I'd be able to share a few things, but there's no time for that. I really want to maximize the time to do that which we have to do so that we'll finish on time and then you make for your coffee. But let me share with you one experience. I have spent my life in encounters. It is an election of grace. The privilege of God's grace. And... I, I don't know if I shared it last when I was here, but please pay attention. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was flat on the ground, and he, I don't know if he, his feet was on the ground or he was in the air. I can't even tell you. Light at his brilliance, splendor. I could look at any part of him forever. There I was like a dead man, looking at this great God that preachers talk about all the time. And I said, my God, what will preachers do when they see him? When I saw him, he didn't open his mouth to say anything to me. And yet he was speaking to me. This is a strange thing about spiritual encounters. And he stretched forth his hand, and light from him entered into my being. Light that ordinarily is like throwing a TV set inside a, a volcano. It should disintegrate it in a moment. How I did not die, it will never tire me to say this, is a miracle that I will ask him to help me explain when we get to heaven. But from that encounter and that light, my life changed. I began to experience phenomenal levels of revelation, phenomenal levels of his power. And in one other encounter, listen very carefully. I saw people who were sick, people who were oppressed, all kinds of people. And it was as though, you know how a lockdown is, like a curfew. 
And I saw the people just lined up on the street. And I was broken. I said, I mean, who did this to these people? And then I heard a voice speak to me from heaven. That I should go and heal them all. And when I heard that voice, I said, this is it. I knew that that was true. I was worshipping the Lord and then the Lord comes to me to give me an encounter and he says, my son, from this day I give you my presence as a gift. Please listen carefully. Can you help me with a little volume? And then my eyes are open and I see this being standing by me and I said, who is this? And he said, he will walk with you as you go to the nations. I said, what is his name? And he said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. I told you that I will explain to you what is responsible for some of these manifestations that you see. I cannot take credit for it. And every time I step into a place, he comes with that spiritual climate. To deliver, to heal, to save, to change, to lift burdens. That is the reason why you can hear that in a moment, oh Jesus, the twinkling of an eye, an age-long captivity, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. I know. Now listen, please listen. I'm about to begin to minister to people. Just pay attention. I didn't used to walk very strongly in the prophetic. I had miracles and all of that. But one night, I was watching William Branham. An old video of his. And I said, look at this dear man. People persecuted him, misunderstood him because maybe towards the end of his life, things just changed like that. And while I was looking at him, I said, but this man feared God. He may have made mistakes, but this is a sincere man. All of a sudden, it was like something, a cold sensation from that laptop to my head. It started going down, right, my whole body within a period of 30 minutes. And after that, by the next meeting I went to, the heavens had opened. What, what, is, what is happening to me? I wasn't born with this. Now please hear me. The Lord gave me an instruction. And he said every nation and every territory. Please help me. Someone sit on the drums for me. Just a symbol. Eh? Anybody who understands what to do. He says every nation that I will send you to. That light that came from me to you. There must be someone in that meeting that that same light will rest upon them. And I tell you, by the God of heaven, I have remained faithful to that call from nation to nation. And tonight, by the privilege of the election of grace, I have come as one sent. You have received me. And the God of heaven is about to move in this place and bring glory to the name of Jesus. Age-long captivities. Just like that. Doors of destinies that have been closed. Parus, Kadeka, Kanias, Kadila, Kaparus, Doors, just like that. Atmosphere Shift now, chains be broken, break now, Holy Spirit, move now, heaven oh I want to pray for you now. Please pay attention, your life is about to change. 
Now here's what will happen. I'm going to minister to people. Just walk with the ushers and let's just walk so we redeem time. What is your name, sir? What do you do? I'm seeing you. Please, someone help us with an extra mic. Is that possible? Please. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you in a vision sitting on a table. And I'm seeing you with money. I'm seeing you with files. And I'm seeing you talking to people. What do you do? I'm a financial advisor. You are a financial advisor. You are a financial advisor. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's shifting you to a new season. It will not be like before. He's connecting you to kings and nobles. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready now? I want to pray for you. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and giving him a name that is above every other name he said that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in the earth and of things under the earth i want to pray for you now please listen at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus there are yokes that have sat upon the destinies of people and as you shout that name the power of God comes upon you. Please, I'd like you to bring those people under the anointing gently and just bring them out here without disrupting the men of God. Are we together? We have to be very fast. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. Everywhere, inside, outside. Father, I have come as you have sent me over the land of South Africa that every spirit that does not name the name of Christ in the name of Jesus, I come tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood. And I decree and declare, as you shout, let every wall of Jericho, let every spirit manipulating your destiny, leave you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, once they begin to shout and people are under the anointing, they shout the name Jesus, help them. If someone is falling under the anointing close to you, please help them so they don't injure themselves. Are you ready now? Father, let the band of wickedness be loose once and for all. At the count of three, shout that name that is above every other name. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Every yoke, every bondage. Kaparakatos ketebeketa. I command every power that is not of God sitting on your destiny. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Now listen carefully. I'm still praying. There are families that never rise beyond a certain level, no matter the level of educational qualification. Tonight I've come. Mani ketas kalikata. Every family. Under that yoke. Ragata free. May fire fall from heaven over this place. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take that fire. Shaya. Take that fire. Rada baya. Rada baya. Rada baya. Rada baya. Rada baya. Rada baya. Be free now. Be free now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Kanambaratos kadosh. Kaliparakatos yata. Hallelujah. 
I'm seeing chains on people's hands. This is what I'm seeing. And this has, this has limited your productivity. You do things and nothing works. Ministry, business, right now I pray upon any hand where there is a chain limiting you from rising. I'm seeing fire coming on hands. Fire, fire coming on hands. I burn that chain. I burn that chain in the name of Jesus Rada balagane kete bregado e parada ya pain randa ya dada di pota koto gododo e pete de bragada chaya abrande kete kete repano ke se bregado e pagarada ya yes chains be broken be broken be broken de kapa para de kapa hallelujah The Lord is ministering to me and is showing me a woman. Six years, you are yet to give birth. Six years. Please, who is that person? I want to pray for you. Your time has come. Six years. We are still praying. Get dissatisfied tonight. Enough is enough. In the name of Jesus, enough is enough. Please, when you find that person very quickly, let me talk to that person because we have to shift. Now, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a family. There is a pattern of death. Almost every year, someone must die. Something happens mysteriously. People just continue to die. I stretch my hands. I don't know who belongs to such a family. Right now I decree and declare. Any family that has the spirit of death. Romi abakatos ketebakata. katiata. In the name of Jesus be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Oh death where is your sting? And oh grave where is your victory? How many years have you been married? I will pray for you, but the one, I'm looking for the one who is six years. Six years without a child. Who is that? Please, very quickly. I will pray for you. Mm. Six years, my dear. You believe in Jesus Christ? Place your hand on your womb. I don't care what the medical situation is. Believe in Jesus. Listen. When you see us talk like this, we are not stupid people. There is a name that is higher and greater. Of the three of you, the power of God is coming on one of you right now. And when that happens, then I pray for the rest. This is the instruction I'm receiving. I just saw fire, light coming on one of you. These ones who are standing here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The same, same time. Same six years. The power of God is coming on one of you. One of you that are standing here. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing rest upon you. And turn your life around supernaturally. When that power comes on one of you, one of you right now, as I'm speaking, my dear, shout Jesus, be free now. Look at me, my dear, in the name of Jesus, I command your womb to open now. According to the time of life I speak to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Look at me. Your time of shame and the mockery over your life. This is what the Holy Spirit is telling me. That he is rolling away that reproach. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Are you the one trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Place your hand there. You believe in Jesus? Don't cry. This is what happens when Jesus comes. A revelation of his love. 
I lay my hands upon you and in the name of Jesus, I command that devil, let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that womb be open. Ephata, open hita and tita. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now hear me for all of you who are standing here. Release her destiny now. Now, let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I release your family. I release everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. I just saw light coming upon you. And the Lord is saying it's your season of fruitfulness. This woman, let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus. You know, I have lived in this reality for many years. But I never get used to it. I still marvel myself at the power of God. I stand, I stand in awe of you, Jesus. I stand, I stand in awe of you, Holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you. No. Bring her back. Please place your hand on your stomach. Jesus, for your glory, let it come to an end. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I speak to you and I release the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it be over now. You will go and you will return with miracles according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing a name Mary. I'm hearing a name Mary. Now, of course, I presume that there might be a, a number of people with such a name. But I'm hearing a name Mary. 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 I just want to speak to you very quickly. And then... Your name is Mary. You're a member of this church. We're going to pray. Sir, look at me. Please tap that man. I don't know you, but as soon as you came out here, the Lord just opened my eyes and I saw you climbing a ladder. Can I pray for you? I'm not, I'm not manipulating you to come out here at all. It's just a word. Look at me, sir. I stretch my hands. By the spirit of grace and prophecy, step into a new season. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what it is that you do, but I release grace upon you. An end comes to this current level. For someone, what you are watching happen here, that is the grace you will take back to your church. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural signs. Genuine genuine manifestations of the power and the grace and the glory of God can I be honest with you not everyone is pretending and faking this thing that's right, there are that's people right. who have encountered the God of the Bible since yes sir yes sir bring the lady that shouts loud right now under the anointing to the hearing of everyone Please don't come out at random. We have to. Mary, I want to pray for you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, in my life, be glorified. Be glorified. In my life. Be glorified. Be glorified. I want to 
pray for you. My dear, look at me. I stretch my hands. I'm seeing God take something out of your body. And the Lord is saying he's bringing you life right now. I curse the spirit that is back of this. Be free now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what has made you to cry, but I'm declaring to you right now. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. These are extensions of the hands of Jesus. That everything Kalimarus Katibra has Katabala Katoshia. Ragosgia. Remember not the former things, madam, nor consider the things of old. For behold, God is doing a new thing in your life. He's doing a new thing in your life by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. January, this year, you lost your job. Who is that person? I'm seeing this in a vision. January, this year, just like that, for reasons you cannot explain. The Lord is asking me to pray for you. We have to hurry up. January, please make sure you are not, please don't tell lies we are in the presence of God. I will pray for everybody. Make sure that we are walking in truth. Madam, I don't know who you are. Please just let me talk with this lady. Yes. Come, can I pray for you? I'm, I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit, I am seeing, you know how, like a ceremony happening that maybe you are, you are crowning someone. That's what I'm seeing happening to you. And the Lord is telling me that he's lifting you and opening doors that you have not even seen before. I want you to believe this. This is the word of the Lord. I stretch my hands over you and in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you that will shift you to a new realm in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let there be a miracle for you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from? In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle for you right now. Huh. My God is able to do just what he says he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on God cause he won't give up on in Jesus name I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit, madam, I do not know you, but I ask the Lord by His Spirit to open up a new chapter for your life. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of God, that grace comes upon you right now. My dear, this lady, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing your shoes being changed in the realm of the Spirit, like another kind of shoe is given to you. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is saying you will begin to run. He's bringing a, a very strange grace for multiplication over your life. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I can't even remember why they are here. Mary, I want to pray for you. The last time I was here, there was the name of a place that God gave me. I couldn't pronounce it. Yes. Please help me pronounce that. Umalanga. There is a businessman. You are from that place. Right now as I'm speaking, the Lord wants to change your life. Who is that person? You are wearing black like a jacket or something. I'm seeing it. Is there someone like that? Just take it easy, my friend. Where are you coming from? Is... Stand up. What do you do? But things are not working. You believe that I can pray for you and God will change your life? I stretch my hands. Let captivity come to a... Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I open up that door by the Spirit. Let it be a new season for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where, where are you coming from? 
Is it coming from that place? What do you do, sir? There's someone that I'm seeing. You're into IT. This is what I'm seeing. You're into IT. The Lord wants to use you to change your entire family because there is a yoke that has sat upon that family. I don't know who that sin is, but I want to pray for you right now. Oh, 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 he's able. New season, new season, new season. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a new season for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are a businessman, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a new season, I release you now. Parasku da barende kashkole bariakata. Let it be a new season. Let the door be open for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. I pray for all of you who are involved in IT. The power of God is coming on one of you. I don't know who, but I just saw that light. The Lord is opening that door right now. I shift you. He already told you wealth is spiritual. I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Step into a new level. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, where is that gentleman who was doing the welcome note? Him and one lady. One gentleman here. God wants to... Where is... Is that him? Yes, sir. What do you do, my friend? Huh? He's an IT Because specialist. Yes, I'm seeing that he's part of the people that I'm talking about. I don't know anything about you, my friend. I'm just walking with the vision that the Lord... Are you into IT? Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus. A new season for you. A new season for you. A new season for you. I connect you by the spirit. To systems and structures. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hear me. Listen. I don't mean to brag. But let me tell you this. Territorially speaking. There are people called kingmakers. That's right. They don't become kings themselves, but they can enthrone kings and they can remove kings. Spiritually, there are people God has given grace. They are spiritual kingmakers, but they can take advantage of that grace and can enthrone people and shift destinies. Believe me, once you see, the problem is once the grace of God is not administered within the boundary of scripture. That is where it becomes error and it deceives people. But the moment the grace of God is dispensed within the coordinates of scripture, you cannot be in error when you are within the boundary of scripture. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is opening my eyes I'm seeing, um, you, you are in South Africa, but I'm not sure you are originally South Africans. It's like an Indian family. I don't know if there's, if there's someone like that or a family. The Lord wants to bring a visitation you are from India. If, if there's someone like that, I just want to pray for you. India, this is what I'm seeing. Wherever they are, if you find them, let me just pray for them. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. One of them, you are wearing a nose mask that is this color. This color like, like blue. You are a young, slender, gentle man who is tall like that. This is what I'm seeing in my vision. Oh, 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 he's able. Oh, 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 oh. Don't worry, my friend. Don't worry. Don't worry. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you for coming, ma. Can I pray for you? I'm looking at you, and the Lord is saying He's bringing an anointing on the entire family. And that he's going to, I don't know what it is that you do, but I want you to mark my words from today. There is such a marvelous grace. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus, take that grace. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, 
that anointing is coming upon you and you will begin to step into realms of possibilities in business in family i decree and declare that grace rests upon you right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i want to pray for the sick now oh dear Bernice, Bernice, like B E R N I C E. Bernice, 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 you are at the back. You are wearing something like a brown, white and brown. Bernice, is there someone like that? Be are you coming from the back? Is she coming from the back? You believe in Jesus? Oh, it's your sister. Can I pray for you? Hold hands together. Lift it up. Father, turn this family around. Here at this conference, take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, please hear me. We are going to do three things very, very quickly. Help this woman. I'm seeing oil coming on her head. This Indian woman. I'm just seeing an angel pouring oil on her head. And the Lord is saying, even in old age, you will do much for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, Three things we're going to do very quickly. How many of you came with your prayer requests? Now here's what I want you to do. I want to pray for the sick now. But whilst we are doing that to conserve time. If, if it is possible. Let's have a few ushers already. Just go around so that you can just drop your prayer request. Let's collate it. You, you already did that. Oh great. Beautiful. You already did that. Excellent. If there's anyone who is yet to submit yours. Just wave it. And there will be someone, ushers, please let's help them. If there's anyone, maybe a few ushers or anyone, if the ushers are busy, any of the workers, just help them so that we make this happen very quickly. Hallelujah. Grace for you. Who is this lady? Oh, huh? Okay, the lady, what's her name? Who knows her name? My dear, look at me. Where is your father? I want to pray for you because the Lord is bringing a visitation to your family. You believe that? I stretch my hands right now over you. And I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord will bring a great visitation to your father. And by extension the entire family. May the grace to make this happen rest upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Will you believe what I'm going to tell you now? We are, not, we are not marketing the flesh. I'm only responding to what God is doing. I'm seeing literally now. When we do this, this is not just some blind... Please listen, listen, listen. This is not just some blind marketing of the flesh but i'm seeing five people that god is raising for the sake of their families there is a dimension of strange financial empowerment i'm going to pray for everyone but these are five particular people you will come and stand one day upon this altar and you will say from that time where the prophetic word came god just connected you to men lord i don't know where the five people are but I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. You don't have to come out, please. Wherever you are, don't worry. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Right now, may that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. Help them, help them, help that lady. Please. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. 
you can be valuable but it takes the anointing to connect you to those who can recognize the value and even reward it are we together please sit down if you can for a while i want to pray for the sick now once i'm done with you please you can return to your seat so that we just ease off this and do this very quickly about to pray for the sick now once we collate the requests may i please request that once we have the prayer request please bring all of them just keep them here just come pour them here i'm about to pray for the sick i believe in the power of the holy spirit i believe in his grace to heal and to deliver i will tell you why i ask you to sit down please sit down if you can please sit down please sit down if you can now there are people here whose destinies have been tied down by delay. Just sit down. You don't have to stand up. I will tell you why I'm asking you to sit down. Please, ushers or people around, I'm going to pray and the grace for speed. Sit down. Sit down. Don't stand. Please sit down. It's going to come on people. Some of them will begin to run physically. I want you to hold them. That's why I said sit down. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, the grace for speed upon your life and your destiny. Take that grace now. Don't bring them out, just hold them. Take that grace right now, from my left to my right. Everything that has slowed down the pace of your destiny. That are not apakakosh katibata. Prende ketes katibata. Speed. Ten years in one year. By the Spirit of God. Ten years in one year. Help them, hold them. Ten years in one. Hold them, please. Hold them, please. Hold them, please. So that they don't injure themselves. That's why I said sit down. Ten years in one year. I prophetically speak to anyone here. Every embargo that will not let you move forward. I stand by prophecy. I push you. Go forward. 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 Go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Go forward in ministry. Go forward in business. Go forward in career. Go forward in family. Sir. Are you a man of God? From where? Okay. Can I pray for you, sir? Because when I was praying for speed, the same vision I saw, please hold that lady, the same vision I saw that God was changing the shoes of a lady, that's what I'm seeing happening to you. I stretch my hands, sir. Oh, there is an oil and a grace that is coming on you. God will so shift you and shift the ministry. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, may that anointing come upon you right now. That the things that you could not do yesterday, grace comes upon you for today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. There are many of you like Joseph. You have helped many people, but they have forgotten you. You are responsible for the building of many businesses. You were responsible for supporting people. Some of them, when they came into South Africa, they didn't know their left from their right. God used you to put their lives in place. The wine presser forgot Joseph and added two years to his captivity. But in the name that is above all names, I call upon my God, who is also your God. Tonight, let the book of remembrance be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Hear me. And the Bible says, And that night could not King Ahasuerus sleep. And he said, Bring me the chronicles. And they found where Mordecai saved his life and was not rewarded. And he says, Who is in the chamber there? And the evil man, Haman, was called. He said, what shall be done to this man? Thinking it was him, he gave the best suggestion. He said, do the same immediately to Mordecai. I want to pray for someone here. 
it may look like you have been forgotten can i tell you the truth people don't just remember they are made to remember most of you from this night i i stand by the god of heaven and i tell you you will receive strange calls this night people numbers that have not attended to you for years i fear god i will not stand here and waste your time you are intelligent and responsible people I know what I'm saying that is making me say what I'm saying. Let me repeat it again. There are many people this night. I am telling you as, as, as surely as the sun rises in the day and sets. I pray for you and I declare according to the vision of the Lord. Those who have forgotten you in the name of Jesus tonight. We place an anointing upon your life. Let there be remembrance for good. let there be remembrance for good now listen we want to pray for the sick just sit down there i'm about to pray for you now listen carefully no 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 you don't have to bring them out except if you just dro dropping something don't worry i'm going to pray for everyone mama don't worry you sit i'm going to pray for you now now please hear me shortly i'm going to ask you to stand i'm asking you to sit because that's the only way to bring some order now we'll do this very very fast the prayer requests remember when they are ready please you can bring them here and just place them before the lord i want to pray for the sick i believe in miracles now when i pray for the sick very quickly I'm going to request that you do what you could not do before and the moment you find out that the power of God has touched you please if possible if I can have maybe one or two pastors just somewhere here so that they can confirm you and then we'll take a few yes any of you at all we can take a few miracles some of you already from what has happened you are seeing that there are already miracles I want to pray for you you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made made a way you made a way you made a way you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way Are you ready now to be prayed for listen to me acts chapter 10 and verse 38 peter was preaching in the house of cornelius and this is what he had to say how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing not they that were sick they that were oppressed for God was with him. I'm about to pray for you. And I want you to believe. You came with someone sick. I want you to believe. Whether you are inside or outside. Jesus is wherever you are. Some of you are standing in for loved ones who are not here. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you right now. Please stand on your feet if you can. Now, the moment I pray, those under the anointing, you don't have to bring them out. Just guide them. I want to pray for you. Believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're standing to respect that anointing. 
believe in impossible miracles right now. I have seen God work wonders and miracles in the lives of people. And tonight, it is my joy again as we celebrate the mighty and the marvelous hands of God. Now, someone is going to shout loud under the anointing. Listen, the moment that happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. I'm only asking you to stand in faith with me and to agree as I pray. That's not the shout. The shout you are hearing. That's a shout there. Now let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on South Africa. You can say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hmm. My God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My God. The power of God is moving here. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right now I decree and I declare. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every spirit that is back of any disease and infirmity. Hear the word of the Lord. I command you let their destinies go now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Now I decree and declare, help them. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head, even to the soles of your feet. Oh, that fire is coming on you now. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Blood conditions. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Blood conditions. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. HIV. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Every bone condition. Inability to walk. Inability to stand. Using an aid. I command be healed now. Every kind of blindness, partial blindness, complete blindness, I command those eyes to open now. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Deaf ears be open now. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a lady you have, I don't know, a growth around your breast area. I command that devil to go now. Every growth around your body, hear the word of the Lord. I command that it dissolves and goes now. Peptic ulcer. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Asthma. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Severe heat around the body. Just your body, whether it's cold or hot. There's, there's that hotness around the body. The power of God is touching you right now. There's someone you couldn't lift your hand. I don't know what pain you came here with. But right now, as I'm praying, the power of God is touching you. I'm seeing someone, I don't know what the condition is now. But you are not able to turn with your neck. You feel severe like a sprain. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching you. Be healed in the name of Jesus. There's someone having heart, a heart condition. I don't know what the condition is, but it is, you have a problem with your heart. We correct it right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Pile. Very painful condition of pile. Right now, as I pray for you, the power of God is touching you right now, where you are. Be healed right now. Someone just at your back here, the lumbar area, 
I'm seeing that you've had severe pain. It's almost as if you cannot stand and stretch. I declare right now the power of God is touching you. Please believe it. The power of God is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your left leg. For someone, your left leg. I don't know whether I, around your knee area. I don't know what the problem is. But the power of Jesus is touching you right now. Amen. High blood pressure goes down right now. Goes down right now. Goes down right now. Hepatitis. The Lord is healing hepatitis of all sorts. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. I don't know what problem you have with your throat. Um, it, it's been so for a very long time. So it, it's not COVID. But you have, it's almost as though your throat is always dry. You've tried to treat it and it's not being healed. And you feel almost as if there is an injury there. I'm praying for you right now. The power of God is touching you this moment. And if there is any family member you know across South Africa who is suffering from COVID-19, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the power of God touch them wherever they are right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, whether I mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, from the crown of your head, my God, there are miracles. Be healed right now. There's someone you don't see very well. Right now, as soon as I'm done praying, right from where you are, God is opening your eyes to see. Very, very clearly. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone, is it appendicitis? You're already beginning to feel very severe symptoms of it. But the power of God is touching you wherever you are right now. In fact, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing someone right now in the hospital. This is a kidney problem. I don't know if it's your father or someone. A kidney problem. This is, this is a situation that humanly speaking, except maybe a kidney replacement or something of that sort. Otherwise, based on the current kidney, is almost damaged. But in the name of Jesus Christ... We speak life to the body of Father wherever He is. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Now hear me. A miracle has happened right now. I want you to check yourself very quickly. Do what you could not do. Don't be afraid. Do what you could not do. The moment you find out that the power of God has touched you. For those outside, if they are coming in for a miracle, then please just allow them, just come. Um, who are they meeting? This gentleman. Okay, this is what will happen. The moment you find out that the power of God has touched you, very quickly, wherever you are, be bold, and I want you to run and come here. Some of you, even while the service was going on, as you were falling under the anointing, there was a miracle. Are you celebrating miracles here? My goodness. My goodness. God is healing people. Come, check yourself. Make your way to the front. Check yourself. Confirm that miracle. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? You couldn't lift your hands. Look at this. Look at this. He couldn't lift his hands. You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we have to be orderly. Maybe we'll do two rows. One here and maybe someone else there. Just arrange them like you see this man. Whoever is coordinating them, help that man under the anointing. Are, are, are we together, gentlemen? Hold on, please. Help me coordinate these people here. So that we, we do, just do it like this. Let's have two rows. Do you understand what I'm saying? You may have to shift them from the back. So you can just join a queue there. So we'll make it very fast. Yes, please. You had an accident this morning. The car rolled three times. You had an accident? Yes. 
when I came. Look at this. Really? Times. It rolled three times. And when I came here, I was in so much pain. And while you were preaching, I got healed. I couldn't do this. You could Oh my God, look at this. It rolled three times. Praise be to God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, you will not die. You will leave. You have no covenant with death. The fullness of your days you will fulfill. And for this God that seems damaged, may my God restore a thousandfold. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please, very quickly. So she had a lump on her chest. Yes. On, on go ahead. Let me hear her. Can you help us with the volume? Yes, please, go ahead. I had What's a, your name? Tina. No, don't give them the mic. Just hold it for them. Yes. I had a lump on my left breast, men of God, to an extent. For how long? I think now it's for 15 years. But 15, 15 years. Yes. Right now, what happened? When you, you, you said there is a lady that has a lump. This lump was painful in such a way that I could not even hold my child very tight or anyone trying to hug Because me. of the pain? Yeah, it, it, it even caused a mark in, 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 in my breast. What in happened right now? I felt the heat, as you were saying, there is a lady and the lump is not there. Anymore. It's gone. Yes. My goodness. <laughs> Over 15 years. I stretch my hands place your hand there this miracle remains permanent by the power of the holy spirit never to return to you again celebrate your miracle god bless you yes please this sister had a pain in the back she had a pain in the back in her back which started after she had a dream let, let her speak i had a dream i was reaching on my father's place then there was a voice which said, you, you mustn't come here. I will send you to the graves. So from that, it was 2017. What? 2017? Yes. And you've had a pain? Yes. What couldn't you do? I could, if I sit down, for me, if I do like this. Okay, Ben, stand up. Ben, stand up. Any pain? Any pain? It's gone. In the name of Jesus everything connected to ancestry and inheritance it never returns to you by the power of the holy spirit yes please very quickly um man of god i was for a month now i was having severe back pain i went to the doctor and they said they weren't seeing anything instead they found a lump in my breast luckily the lump wasn't cancerous but the back pain was still continuing i kept on going back and they said they didn't know what it was last week they said my kidneys were swollen and they gave me antibiotics for the kidneys every time i was eating anytime i would take a pill anytime i would try and eat something i would just vomit it out again when i came today i was having severe pain on my side and over okay. here and after you prayed I right now yes, check sir. yourself take that grace over forever in the name of jesus yes please Apostle, you spoke about lower back pain, and I've been experiencing lower back pain as a result of my one foot being shorter than the other. But as you prayed, I felt the power of God, the Hold mobility. On. What happened to you? My one leg is shorter than the other. So from the age of 15. Oh, one leg is shorter than the other? Yes, by about an inch and a half. So it's actually put a lot of pressure on my knees oh. and my hip. So the mobility, even when I've gone to see a chiropractor, it's like my balance is kind of shifted off. But even tonight, I've just felt the mobility come back, even as Completely. I bend my knees. Look at this. Look at this. Run. 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 Hallelujah. My God, what a miracle. One leg shorter than the other. And so he would, he would feel that, that, that strain on his leg. But Jesus... He'll never return to you again in the name of Jesus. Yes, very quickly, we have to pray. A man of God, last year I, I had a dream. I saw a cat coming in my bed. It's been happening for a long time. Yes, and, and what happened? What, and, was, what, was the, what was the result? I of that? had a, a heart problem after it. And then, two months ago, I had a dream. Someone was wrapping something here in my bed. And then after that, I've been feeling something here, heavy in my and bed. And right now? And yes, even right now. But what now, happened to you? Uh, I don't know. It's just the 
right just now. disappeared yes. in the name of Jesus Christ supernatural healing for you I'd like to hear this gentleman's testimony what happened to him this this my yes this my friend what happened to you I'm seeing um, there there's a bandit yes go ahead Apostle um, uh, my three brothers and I were, um, were part of an accident and by the grace of God, we were saved from a car that was written off. You had an accident? Yes, oh about a week ago. Oh, your two sons were with him? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Oh, my God. We were actually, we were actually on our 21 days of fasting. And the day we were praying against the gods of South Africa all the gods that day i remember i cursed all the strange altars in the land and as soon as we finished the prayer they drove out from here and a drunkard left his lane ran on them head on collision three of them could have died that day if not god and there was no death no no death now what happened what happened to you my friend oh you broke your arm no, he broke his arm the other one broke his leg you broke your arm yes could you lift it before lift your hand now come on bring it down lift it again hallelujah now in the name of jesus i declare perfection for you complete perfection let me use this opportunity and let my voice with Apostle Felix and decree and declare. If there is anyone here and the spirit of death is roaming around your life or your family, by the God of heaven we decree and declare. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have no covenant with death. You have no covenant with death. You are protected in the name of Jesus. Your family members are protected in the name of Jesus. Be protected in the air. Be protected on land. Be protected by sea. In the name of Jesus Christ. Indeed, I speak to you that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Yes, please, very quickly. Uh, I was feeling piles. My father is also sick with piles. So when you are sitting close where there's a air con, or it's oh, cold. The, the people. This is your son. He broke his leg. So he can't, he can't walk without. It's good that all three came out. Oh, they had the surgery last week. My God. Major surgery. Can I pray for three of you? In the name of Jesus. This is the one who seems to be most injured. And you couldn't walk without this. Ha, ha, has he gone through the surgery? Okay. In the name of Jesus, let there be complete recovery. For all of you. Right now. Pain, I cost you by the God of heaven. Now, when we minister to people like this, you have to understand that we are not downplaying the place of medicine and what the doctors are doing. Are we together? We are not, we are not in antagonism. We are standing in partnership with them. So we are not violating the laws. He's gone through a surgery. And, and I, I just want you to understand. Because there is a way people minister healing that looks like they are fighting doctors. No, we are not. We are all in partnership to see that God's people experience wellness. Is that all right? I just needed to put that very, very straight so that you get that. But in the name of Jesus, for all three of you, gentlemen, may the Lord bring you speedy healing and perfection. The leg that went through this surgery, in Jesus' name, it will be perfected, perfected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My God, there are so many testimonies. I understand there's a curfew. Let's see how we can take a few and then I'll just bless the remaining because we have to pray and I have to speak over your life. Very quickly. I, I was having piles. I feel a, a severe pain 
on my back. So sometimes when you are sitting close where it is cold, or it's cold, it's June, July, I feel cold like I, I feel the very strong pain. But yes. now, completely. Um, even when I feel I was supposed to feel it, and I was sitting close to the pain there. I can't feel it. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. I have a problem with my bones. I had surgery when I was 18. You had surgery? Yes, the doctors didn't know why, what was happening, even with my feet. So I moved my bones. Inside in movement, it's like a hammer against uh, cement or something. Or they crack or they crackle, and I'm still very young. The doctors didn't know what was wrong. What happened to you now? But now I got like, a tingling in my, in my feet, and I can move without any sound and crackle. And Completely. It's gone. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Apostle, I was having a sore throat in the, in the mornings. I used to, blood used to come out from my mouth like this. Blood? So, yeah, just from nowhere. But now we, I don't have anything. Completely. In the name of Jesus, yes. Man of God, something moves on in my left, right from my left foot, through my waist, into my head. And when the thing is moving, I can literally trace it with my finger. Something just moves, moves like that? Like that. How long body. has that been? For years, it has been like that. Okay. So when you said something at the left hand side of this person, I felt heat that I could not explain. And the movement started ceasing. Immediately, I nearly fell actually, but I was like, what's going on? Is it like, it's like current, electric current moving in me immediately. And now I'm free. Completely. Free from every manifestation of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. My goodness. Okay. Yes. Uh, Apostle. Let's just have, let's just have, okay. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, uh, since last month, uh, after coming back from work, I had a sharp pain at my back. A sharp pain? Yes, and when I came even yesterday, I was in a lot of pain. And I was sitting there today. When you were praying, I just was holding my back. Now the pain and is gone. And completely, the pain is yes, gone. Yes, yes. Now, can I just have one, maybe one more here? I was having constant stomach pain for a while now. But, and whenever I would press in, I would feel the pain. But now I cannot feel the completely. pain. I can press as many times. And completely. I'm not feeling anything. Now, very quickly... For the sake of time, I sincerely ha- okay. Let's take us as a last, and yeah. then I'll just pray for everyone. Don't worry, you have you can register in your testimony for tomorrow so that we can redeem the time and just quickly pray on the request. And I speak over your life. Praise the Lord. Yes, men of God. From beginning of this year, my my knees started to crack and they were so painful. And when we were praying, I felt a warm sensation going down and the pain just completely. Couldn't Check yourself. Yes, I, I can do it now. Any pain? Completely. Completely. And, in the and, name of Jesus. And, and men of God, I had abdominal pains. And last week I went to see the doctor and he said I have fibroids. And as you were praying, I tried to, to push back and I, I could not feel that abdominal pain. Completely. Uh, completely, men of God. Completely. We command that fibroid to disappear from your body. Never returns to you in Jesus' name. Now for all of you who have been healed and those who could not make it out, in the name of Jesus, even as you have come, we declare that your healings are permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God that has touched you, we decree that that same power will preserve you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Please stand on your feet if you can. Hallelujah. Now I believe... Let me share with you a scripture very quickly while praying. 2 Kings chapter 19, please, from verse 14. 2 Kings chapter 19 and, okay, thank you. 2 Kings chapter 19 and verse 14. Now, please look up. The Bible says, And Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Next verse. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, and hast made heaven and earth. Uh huh. Lord, bow down thy ear and hear. Open, Lord, thy eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which had sent him to reproach the living God. 
Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire for they were no gods but the works of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. 19. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou as the Lord God, even thou only. Next verse. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed unto me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. That there are times in our lives where we can be so overwhelmed. Even if we have to prophesy, we see in part. If we have to minister, even if in a vigil, there is only so much we can do. I love to pray for requests like this because it's the most accurate representation of your desires. You wrote it by yourself. And many of them, things you may not be able to share. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come here's what i want you to do i want you to just stretch your hands in one minute towards the altar and i'd like you to begin to pray that these egyptians i see today i will see them no more forever is it all right if i call apostle felix to just join me in this prayer god bless you sir we are going to pray and declare over these requests Halina parasu gata brandi ge barako shikete pledi ge baratasia zata parus gati bala stretch your hand South Africa that sentence is averted by the Spirit of God shana bakato zabrande ge bala kato skate brande ge bala ita kata brande ge borisa shikete bala ge Behold your threatenings and stretch your hands to heal that signs and wonders may be wrought in the name of your Holy Son. Declare that everything you have written here that has mocked the integrity of God over your life, it falls like that on before the act. Paradaka yekete brakete lega de wen shekete ya ramara rabada rakade bo sobre shana bagate brande ke parus don't be tired you are speaking to the God of heaven you will return with more inspiring testimony brakata la barata ya la brakadash rabadash heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. Father, behold their threatenings. Behold their threatenings. And therefore now, Lord, we decree and declare by the God of heaven, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Son of the living God, that everything that represents the desires of your people right on this altar, is now turned to a testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Jesus from the dead every affliction everyone in captivity everyone that has been held bound everyone seeking their body let there be an immediate answer now in the name of Jesus we declare a turnaround, a turnaround, a turnaround in the name of Jesus. Lord, we command speedy answers. Speedy answers. Speedy answers. The word of the Lord came to the servant of God. And he said, by this time tomorrow, a barrel of milk shall be sold for a shekel at the gates of Samaria. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power that raised Jesus, 
from the dead and in the name of Jesus Christ we declare in 24 hours the same way the fig tree dried up from the root in 24 hours in 24 hours in 24 hours in 24 hours we declare testimonies Father, you read the letter that Sennacherib spread on the altar. Father, we are asking you, O oh God, read everyone's heart desire now. And the same way Isaiah declared to Sennacherib that God has heard your prayers, we now speak prophetically like you said from the mouth of your servant to Hannah Lord that the God of Israel has heard your petition the God of Israel has heard your petition the God of Israel has heard your petition now receive your answers receive your answers receive your answers receive your testimony in the name of Jesus hallelujah I stand in faith again and I declare He said Moses Why do you cry unto me He said tell the people that they go forward yes, sir. Therefore I prophesy to every one of you Every request here That has kept you backward And kept you stagnated I decree and declare by the voice of prophecy From tonight Go forward in the name of Jesus Amen Go forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare over you that these Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. Amen. May you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Every human vessel that must partner with the Holy Ghost to bring answers to this prayer. Yes. We prophesy to the north, the south, the east and the west of South Africa. Wherever the men are, we gravitate them towards your destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You hear me? Anyone who says over their dead bodies, for these prayers to be answered, we command the earth to open and swallow them. Amen. Every altar that sponsors this pain, every altar that sponsors this discomfort, every altar that sponsors this tears, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we set them on fire. Amen. We set them on fire. We set them on fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. I decree and declare everything responsible for emptiness in your life. It comes under judgment now. Amen. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Now listen. Hallelujah. I decree and declare. The anointing required for the next level of your kingdom assignment. I stand in partnership with the angel over this house. There are many of you who are the next revivalist in this nation. Oh yes. Many yes, of you yes. are the financial apostles, political apostles. At the count of three, I must do this impartation. Wherever you are, some of you have seen it in dreams that you will be the ones packing the stadiums for the kingdom. Take that fire now. Amen. Take that fire now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the move of God will not be without you. Take that fire. 
in the name of Jesus. The grace to excel in ministry. The grace to do ministry with integrity. The grace to excel in business. Receive that grace. The mantle for the marketplace. Receive that grace. The mantle for politics and governance. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I decree and declare over your life that as God is recruiting this end time army, men and women who will be at the cutting edge of God's prophetic agenda, yes, yes, oh, yes. may He find you in this season. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. By reason of this prayer, many of you will begin seasons of training with the Holy Ghost. He will begin to walk with you. He will begin to show you things. Every anointing that has been reserved for this end time over South Africa, we stand by the privilege of priesthood. We declare heaven, release it to God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. Apostolic mantles, yes. prophetic mantles, yes. evangelistic mantles, yes. pastoral mantles, yes. entrepreneurial mantles, yes. governmental mantles. Yes. Take that grace Fire. in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray every pastor here represented your ministries in the name of Jesus, whatever has stagnated you so that you will not go forward by the power of prophecy. We push you, go forward. forward. Go forward. Yes. Greater exploit. Amen. For Jesus. Amen. Greater exploit. Amen. For the kingdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You hear me? Please do not miss tomorrow's service, but let me speak. Every altar over South Africa. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Every planting. Ordinances of ancestry, foundational orchestration, destroying the destinies of men. We come by the rod of the higher priesthood, and in the name of Jesus, we set those altars on fire. We set those altars on fire. We set those altars on fire. Hallelujah. We speak to the two leaf gates of South Africa. That everything that has closed you. We stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic. Let the gates of South Africa be opened now. Amen. Be opened now. Amen. Be opened now. Amen. Open for greater development. Open for greater revival. Open for greater manifestation of God's power. Hallelujah. And we stand in partnership with the government and all who have continued to fight COVID. They are doing their best medically. But we stand with the tokens of the prophetic. That's right. We speak over the spiritual climate of South Africa. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Yes. COVID-19, we call you by your name. And we curse you by the God of heaven. Amen. We call you by your name. And we curse you by the God of heaven. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We decree and declare. Everyone who has lost money, everyone who has lost opportunity, people have cried because of the, the whole pandemic. In the name of Jesus, may the restorer restore you a thousandfold. Amen. Hear me? Every spirit that sponsors crime. Every spirit that sponsors corruption, yes. every spirit that sponsors moral decadence, Amen. hear the word of the Lord. Yes. We sound the shofar of revival over South Africa. Oh, yes. Yes. Thy yes. kingdom come, O oh God. Rapa. Thy kingdom come, O oh God. Rapa. From Rapa. city to city, Rapa. from Rapa. region Rapa. to Rapa. region, Rapa. let there be a wind of evangelism, Rapa. a wind Rapa. of salvation, yes. a wind of the prophetic. In the name let of Jesus, arise. 
Let men of fire arise in the name of Jesus. My last session with you is tomorrow in the morning. And let me encourage you. Please, whatever sacrifice you will make for tomorrow, I will share with you the last key that controls the move of God. And there will be a final ignition upon your spirit, man. Amen. Make that sacrifice. Amen. But as for tonight, I assure you that you must return with a testimony. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. In Jesus' name. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Woo! There is a song we used to sing. Jehovah, turn my life around. Jehovah, turn my life around. He made a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. Put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, what a night, what a night, what a night. Church. We're going to dismiss now quickly. Please, tomorrow, whatever you do, get yourself here. Amen, somebody. Get yourself here. Help your destiny. You know, there's a saying that when you cook, the, the best part of the food is, well, if you make a soup or a gravy, the best part is the bottom. Because that's where all the ingredients settle. I believe tomorrow morning, all the ingredients are settling on your life. Amen, somebody. So please make sure tomorrow morning you are here. Amen. Lift up your hands as we pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We honor you. We give you the glory, the praise, and all adoration for all that you've done tonight. This is your doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, Father, as we dispatch, I pray, Lord God Almighty, that you assign multitudes of angels to go ahead of everyone and make all crooked places straight. Everyone here will get home safely. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.